Okay, let's work out this super fun integral. If you can do this, right, you're on top of your game. Anyways, let's get going. Square root of x squared minus 9, let's refer to this chart. That's the third situation. Let's begin by saying x is equal to a times secant theta. And then a, we have to look at the 9 as 3 squared. So a is equal to 3. We will take this integral from the x row into the theta world. Begin by saying x is equal to 3 times secant theta. And then we still also have to get the dx. So let's differentiate both sides right here. We get dx equal to 3. And the derivative of secant theta is going to be secant theta tangent theta. And then we have the d theta right here. Let's plug in. So here we have equal to the integral square root x squared. We're just going to square both sides right here. So x squared will be 3 squared, which is 9. And then we have secant squared theta. So let me put that down. And then we have minus 9. OK? And then the denominator, we have x to the third power. So I have to look at this and then cube it both sides. x to the third power is the same as 3, square, uh, 3 to the third power, which is 27. And then secant to the third power theta. Like that. And then dx is just this. So let me put this down right here as well. 3 times secant theta tangent theta d theta. And let's see if there's anything that we can do. Well, we have the numbers. This is a 3. This is a 27. We can reduce this to be 9. In another word, I can take out a 1 over 9. So we, take that. we can take that outside. And we have the integral. And then this right here, let me just factor out the 9s right here. So let me take out 9. And then we have the secant square minus secant square theta minus 1. And the denominator. Here we have secant to a third power theta, and I also have another one right here, secant um, theta right here. So I can cancel this one out, and then we have two left right here. So on the denominator, we have secant squared theta. And on the side, we still have the tangent theta, d theta. Okay? Well, let's see what can we do with this. Square root of 9, it's the same as 3. Right? This right here, it's the same as 3. Right? Square root of 9 is the same as 3. And this is going to be a number. I can take it outside. 3 over 9 will get 1 third. Okay, because we have the 3 over 9. Okay, square root, of, square root of 9 is equal to 3. And then this right here, secant squared theta minus 1. Because we're on the third situation, we can expect to use this to help us out. Secant squared theta minus 1 is the same as tangent squared. Okay, tangent squared theta. But then in this case, it's in the square root. So what can we do? But cancel out the powers. So we have tangent on the top, OK? So this is still the integral. This is just tangent theta on the top over secant square theta. And then we multiply by one more. So tangent theta times this tangent theta, we might as well just put it right here, tangent square theta d theta, OK? Well, let's see what can we do next. Let's rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine in these situations because when we are dividing tangent and secant, um, it's not product. So maybe let's just try to work with sine cosine. Maybe that's better. So all the way in the front, we still have the one third integral. Um, for the tangent theta, it's the same as sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. This is for the tangent. And then one over secant, it's the same as regular cosine square theta, OK? So we still have that to be d theta. So once again, this is because 1 over secant square and then tangent square are rolled down right here. This way, as you can see, this is just the same as, we can cancel this out, sine square theta. So we can try to integrate 1 third integral of sine square theta d theta instead. And how can we do that? We have to do the power reduction formula. So this is the same as integrating one third integral. What's this? This is one half. Let me just write this down. This is one half. And we multiply by one minus cosine of two theta. OK, d theta by one of the trig identity that we have from the previous section. And let me just bring this down here. We see that we have 1 third times 1 half. In another word, we have 1 sixth. And we still have the integral 1 minus 
cosine of 2 theta d theta. Okay? All this right here has nothing to do with integral yet. Finally, we are. Anyways, let me put on 1 over 6 right here. And let me just put on the result. Because to integrate 1, we have what? The integral of 1 in the theta world is just theta. The antiderivative of cosine is positive sine, but this is negative. So we have minus sine. And the inside will stay the same. Okay? But then because of the inside, the derivative of the inside is 2, right? Because the derivative of the inside is 2, we have to divide it by 2. So let me put on multiply by 1 half. And just to save space, let me just put it down right here. So that's the only integration part that we did. And now what? This expression is still in the theta world. We have to go back to the x world. How can we do that? And by the way, we should distribute this, but then let's just worry about that in a minute. Theta is equal to what? We have to refer back to the original, right? The substitution. Um, if we divide both sides by 3, we can look at this as secant theta is equal to x over 3. In another word, I can apply the inverse on both sides, the inverse secant on both sides. So we can look at this as, uh, let me just say theta, it's going to be the inverse secant of x over 3. Okay? So I'm going to write this down right here for the data, but then in the meantime, I'm also multiplying by 6. So we have 1 over 6 inverse secant of x over 3. That's for the theta, and then also the 1 over 6. And now what's this? <laughs> 1 over 6 times negative 1 half, of course that's going to be negative 1 over 12. But then what's sine of 2 theta? Oh, I don't have too much with that. However, we do know this. Sine of 2 theta is the same as saying 2 sine theta cosine theta by using the double angle formula for the sine. So perhaps I can cancel all the 2's. Um, let, me, let me do that right here. So I can cancel all the 2 and then six, 1 over 6 times that. We have the 1 over 6 right here. And now I just need to figure out what sine of theta cosine of theta, and how can we do that? Well, we have to use this right here to draw a triangle. Secant theta is equal to x over 3. That means we have a right triangle. Just try to draw it like this way. You always put a right angle right here and the theta right here. And then secant in the right triangle, it means hypotenuse over adjacent. So we have x right here and 3 right here. And now of course, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure this out. And this is what? This is square root of x squared minus 9, okay? So, for the sine theta part, by looking at this triangle, sine theta is what? Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so we have this over that. So let me put that down as square root of x squared minus 9 over x, opposite over hypotenuse, okay? And cosine theta is what? So now I'm looking at this part. By looking at this triangle, cosine theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So we have 3 over x. So we multiply by 3 over x. And then we are done. But then, of course, we can do a little bit of things right here because that's 3 and then 1 over 6 can cancel. So finally, this is going to be 1 over 6 inverse secant of x over 3. And then we can reduce this. We have minus 1 half. And on the top, we have square root of x squared minus 9 over x times x on the denominator. Of course, we get x squared. Phew, plus c. And then this is it. Okay? Get ready for the next one.